All right, everyone, welcome back to This Family Life. If you are new here, welcome for the first time. I am Misty and I am so glad that you are here. I really do hope that you will enjoy these videos and learn something from them that you can apply to your life and subscribe and stick around here on the channel. So this is our grocery tips series. We've done a few of these now. And so this week I thought I would focus more on the concept of a prepper pantry. Okay, so there are different variations of this. There's like a prepper pantry that you don't touch. You buy things for when, not, I don't say apocalyptic, apocalyptic times happen, right? But you're planning for the worst case scenario. And so you are stockpiling for that and you do not use it and that's it, right? Okay, so that is not the type of prepping that I fall into. I am the type of prepper that has what we call a working prepper pantry, okay? So I do have overflow, I do have stock up on things, but I work through it, right? So I'm constantly using and replacing, using and replacing. So what I'll do is like, I've got a row of green beans, I'm using them, but I'm also stocking up on them as I find them. So I'll put the newest stuff to the back where the oldest stuff's to the front, right? So I'm working through it, it's a working pantry. And so I thought today we would discuss seven tips, seven, kind of got my hands going weird there, seven tips on how you can start a prepper pantry. And when I say that, I'm talking about a working prepper pantry, okay? Things that we're actually gonna work through. There are lots of channels that focus on really, really prepping for that end times moment, right? That, that's not what I'm talking about and I'm not one of those people. So that's not what you're gonna get here. But if you're into how can I start a working prepper pantry that I can function from and utilize and still stock up, that's what we're talking about, okay? So number one is consider your space options, okay? Where are you gonna be able to stock food in your house? How much space do you have? So this is kind of a problem for me. I, I don't have a huge pantry. I don't have a huge walk-in pantry with tons of extra space. And so when I decided to start building a small prep for my family, it was, where am I gonna put this, okay? And I still want my husband to add additional shelves into my pantry area, but we've been talking about that for a long time and it hasn't happened. So let's just say that's not his priority, right? I know it's not, and that's okay. He's got a lot of things going on too. So we had to kind of look at what am I realistically going to do here? And so we had unused space above our washer and dryer. And so I started utilizing that first. So that's where I keep things like cereal, uh, paper towels, treats that I don't want the kids to have easy access to. That was kind of where I started, was putting stuff up there. Well, it doesn't take long to outgrow that. So then I decided that I needed a second fridge and freezer. And so I bought one at auction for inside and moved the fridge we had inside to our garage. So now we have a French door style fridge in the garage. So it's got a small pull out freezer. And then we've got the um, bigger fridge and freezer in the house. So we had that. And so then I decided like there's a whole wall in my laundry room that's not utilized for anything. And it's not because the door's kind of open to it, but they stop. So it's just a big open space. And I guess a lot of people might use that to stock um, like their mop and broom and stuff like that, but we have ours somewhere else. So it was just unused space. And so we decided that we would get one of those big um, metal carts from, or you could call it a bread rack type thing from Home Depot, and we would put that in that area. So we've done that. Then I decided that the space under my washer and dryer that's empty, I could put buckets down there. So that's where my buckets of like um, flour, sugar, and rice are. So you just kind of have to look around your house and see where you can put things. So all of my stuff's hidden. It's not like it's out where like everybody that comes over thinks, oh my gosh, you have a ton of food or what's going on. But you just kind of have to look at your needs and you look at your space. So then the last thing that happened this year with space for us is I decided I wanted a chest freezer for the garage. And actually what I want and hopefully what I will work towards one day is I want an industrial refrigerator in my house that is a huge two door mega fridge in the house. And then I want a three door one in the garage that's all freezer space. 
So that that's the goal <laughs> eventually. Um, it may not happen this year. Of course, it's not gonna happen this year. Let's be realistic. But that is what I'm working towards is I would love to be able to um, do that for my house. So we'll see when and if that ever happens. <laughs> it is a goal though. Um, so number two, consider your budget. Okay, so how are you going to start prepping? How much of your budget can you put towards prepping items? And a lot of people will try to do like a $5 per week um, start to stock up. However, with prices going so high right now, unless you're catching those loss leaders with that $5, that $5 just isn't gonna go very far. And so you're gonna have to decide what kind of budget you can set aside towards your prep, okay? I don't have mine broken out that way. You know, I tell you that I give myself $341 a month for groceries and $100 for household. That includes all of my stock up stuff as well. And so I can't really tell you an exact figure on how much I spend on prep versus how much I spend on groceries. I just figured out what my overall budget was going to be. And then it's up to me how much of, um, you know, how much of that money is going to go to prep and how much of it's going to go to current use. So consider your budget, consider your space restrictions. So those are your two biggest restrictions for prep is do you have the space to keep it and do you have the money for it? Okay. So number three is start on a small scale, okay? So you don't have to start with everything. You don't have to buy a rack and go to the store and buy enough stuff to fill it up. You don't have to do that. But as you find those good deals, stock up on them, put them to the side, let it start building up a little bit, okay? So it's it can be hard to get started because you're using stuff as you buy it which is why I'm saying kind of figure out a way to split up your budget, how you want to split it up for this stuff is prep and try not to touch your prep for a few months as you get started. And that way, the next thing you know, you're in the rhythm, you know how much you're spending on prep, you know how much you're spending on regular groceries and you've built up some prep stock and now you've got something to start working with. Okay. So number four, I would say start with basics. Okay. Also don't start with going crazy trying to stock up on everything you see preppers stock up online, okay? You can watch a million different YouTube videos on prep. They're all going to tell you what you should and shouldn't prep. You're going to have to prep what your family's going to eat and what your family will use. So start making a list of that and then figure out which items you should start stocking up on first. I would say things like canned goods, beans, rice, some sort of protein, okay? That would be a good one to go. Spices, um, broths, your basics, things you can work into lots of different recipes, okay? And that's part of the beauty of having a prep is you can make a million different things with what you have. And it's, it's the most freeing feeling once you're there. Once you're there and you've got a lot of stuff, it's so nice to just be able to say, what are you all thinking for dinner tomorrow? And your kids scream out, I want tacos. And you're like, no problem, I got that. Or your husband's like, lasagna. And you're like, no problem, I got that. Or smothered pork chops, whatever it is, you don't have to worry because you've been working towards getting it all together. But start with the basics and then start adding in more and more things. And that's where those lists can come in handy. I know I've kind of panned those in the past with um, the prepper lists. And that's just because there's so much on there that I either already had or didn't feel that I needed for my family. But if you need some sort of list, just sit down and go through your kitchen or go through the recipes that your family normally eats and make a list of the top 20 ingredients and see what of those ingredients you could prep ahead that you could you have the room to store and you have the money to buy. And those are the things you should start working on first. So next, rotate items as you use them. This is important for prepping. You don't want to just start shoving the oldest stuff to the back and keep putting the current stuff in the front. You have to keep moving it forward. Um, so it's like the first in should be the first out, right? So what I do is my working, working pantry is my little pantry in my kitchen. Then I have my overflow pantry in the laundry room where I'm stocking stuff, right? And so then what I do is on the weekends, I will look at what I've used out of my working pantry. I will go to the prep pantry. I'll go to that laundry room and I'll pull out what I need to replace in the working pantry. And then and that helps because it's not things scattered everywhere. And it helps because then I can just look in my laundry room area to see what I'm starting to run low on and need to start stocking up on when I find good deals. So number six, remember to save space for basics that aren't food related. Okay, so this could be 
like toilet paper, paper towels, shampoo, deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrushes, hairbrushes, all the different things, right? That you're going to need for health and beauty, okay? Uh, feminine hygiene products, diapers and wipes if you've got babies. Um, it can be any of that sort of stuff. Makeup, if you're a makeup person, I am clearly not a makeup person, um, but all of that type of stuff is going to take up space as well. And so luckily in our bathroom, we have an area above um, the cabinet that's open. So we keep extra toilet paper up there. Um, we've gotten, we've got pretty good storage in our bathroom for overflow of like shampoo, uh, toothbrushes, toothpaste, deodorant, all that kind of stuff. So it works out for us. But if you don't have good space in your bathroom, where are you going to keep that? Can you put it in um, totes or tins and put it under your bed? Do you have space in your closet under where your clothes hang? Where are you going to put things? So remember, it's not just about where you're going to put food products, but where are you going to put your household products as well? And then number seven is restock items as you utilize them. So like I said, I, I do it so I have a working pantry inside and my prepper pantry in my laundry room. And then on the weekends, I will restock my working pantry from my prepper pantry, okay? So I'm restocking there. And then I'm looking at the prepper pantry and saying, okay, we're running low on Rotel. We're running low on tomato paste. This, this, this. That's how I know what I need to get on my list for either finding good deals at the grocery store, stocking up at Sam's, whatever the case may be. So you'll find a system that works best for you. That's just the system that works best for me. I have not found a freezer system that works best for me yet because I have three freezers now and it's hard to remember what's everywhere, but the inventory system just blows my mind. I just have not been able to get that one finished out. So that's my seven tips for you on how to start a working prepper pantry. Again, it's finding balance. What does your family need? where can you put it and how much can you spend on it? That's going to be your big three. Once you figure those three things out, it's easy street. It's just finding it what's on sale, buying it and stocking it in your area. That's all you got to do. I promise there's nothing really hard or um, there's no secret knowledge on how to do it. That's about all it boils down to. But my, my biggest tip, and, and I really didn't include this on here, is don't overspend on your prep, okay? Make sure you're doing it when you find those good deals because if you're overspending on your prep, you're never getting ahead and that kind of defeats the purpose. The purpose is to spend less now to save more later. It's not to spend more now just to have more stuff. So remember that, that's a good one. And, and don't hoard things your family won't eat. So you know I said on here, um, make sure that you start with the basics your family will eat. Don't start prepping a ton of stuff that your family won't eat because if you do, you're wasting money and you're just you're prepping yourself into disaster because you're never going to eat it okay so don't buy stuff your family won't eat so that's the best tips i can give you on how to start a prepper pantry um it it really is not that hard and i promise you'll be surprised how quickly you can get things together so that is it for today i hope you've enjoyed this one um the next one i have coming up for you is just going to be some common grocery mistakes common grocery store mistakes so i look forward to filming that one for you and I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Have a good day. Bye.